G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Meter here. Welcome to my redstone shop where you can always find a bargain. You only need one diamond for each one of these slots. All you need to do is spread out your diamonds and plop them in like so. This does at least seem like the best way to organize a shop to make it convenient for the buyer. It also makes things convenient for the seller as you can adjust the amount that each item is worth. As I was saying, what's not so convenient is how you have to manually restock. I did it again, didn't I? So, restocking a shop like this manually using the player is kind of painful. And because this is a redstone engineering channel, I think you know where this is heading. We of course want to make a machine that can take a box which looks like this and transform it into a box that looks like this. So how do we even start to tackle a problem like this? Well first of all, loading shulker boxes automatically is actually quite trivial. All you need to do is have a mechanism like this that detects when the shulker box is full, then ejects the shulker box automatically once it's completely full like so. And you get an automatically filled shulker box. However, this is not quite what we want. This is only what we want as the input to our machine. At the output, we want a shulker box which has each slot only partially filled. And it turns out that this is actually quite challenging to accomplish. To understand why, I'm going to place down an empty shulker box in this slot like so. And as you can see, our hopper will begin filling up the very first slot. If I move this stack over to here, it will still fill up the first slot. And it will not roll over to the second slot until it's finished filling the first slot. So it's not actually possible to only partially fill each slot of the shulker box. Or maybe it is. Let's instead place down a very specially prepared shulker box in this box loader. You can look at it here. It actually has items already occupying all the slots. I place this down and open it up. If I remove this item right here, our hopper will start pushing items into this slot. Once it reaches the correct fill level, we can start filling up the next slot. So all we need to do is continue removing these items backwards through the shulker box until every single slot is filled to the level that we want. So that's cool. We've taken a problem that was initially impossible and now have obtained an actual avenue to obtain a solution. However, in doing so, we've introduced additional complexities like how are we actually going to create this shulker box and how are we actually going to perform the backfilling operation? And what parameters do we want to set for our final solution? Well, if we want a shop interface that presents multiple items side by side like this, then we will want a solution that is one wide tileable. Now what I mean by one wide tileable is for example taking this shulker box loader and stacking it side by side in a configuration like this such that each slice can operate independently of the one next to it. So drafting up a quick concept for the backfilling operation, we want to place down our prepared shulker box in here. Then we want to take specifically the item from the last slot put it into an item filter then we need to remove that item start filling up this slot like so and then we need to transition to the next item filter that out of the shulker box and we can fill up the next slot. So I'm just thinking if we want to make sure that we provide this filter with the reverse order, we could probably create another shulker box with the items specifically in the reverse order like so. And then we can use this shulker box, take out the item from the first slot of this shulker box, put it into the item filter here. Ah. There we go, put it into the item filter, there we go. And now, there we go, we can take out that item, start filling up the slot. Then we need something to remove these items. Put the next item in. 
unlock it like so. Fill up the next slot. And you can already tell that I've gone out of a one wide tileable system already. I don't know about you, but I'm having a very bad feeling about all of this. So before we go any further, let's start thinking critically. Like, I'm not quite sure that every single slice needs to be able to function completely independently. After all, they're all essentially achieving the same objective of backfilling these shulker boxes. Alright, check this out. This here is a little demonstration of why it's sometimes important to think critically. So if we have our prepared boxes here, the items in the forward order, they will sit inside of our slices like so. And then if I place down the box with the reverse order right here, we can parallelize the entire process of performing the backfilling. So if I send this minecart, it'll pick up this item, start pulling out these items, like so. There we go. Let's remove all the items simultaneously, and now we can have a mechanism with a variable counter or something like that. It'll fill up each one of these slots to a variable degree of each one of our items. So actually designing the slice for this, we know that we want to have our shulker box placed down here. We want to have a dropper to input a very specific amount of items into each one of our slots. We need a dispenser to place down the shulker box. And we need a way to collect the shulker box, which can be done to use a composter, a sticky piston, and then if we zero tick this composter, it will actually pick up our shulker box like so. And then we can drag the composter over a hopper and collect our shulker box. Nice. So now we need to start thinking about how the player is actually going to use this machine. The way that I think that it will be used is that we would have a bunch of storages that act as a buffer filling out with our shulker boxes. If one of these inventories is only partially full, then that means we activate the slice for that, and next time the entire machine is activated, that slice, along with any other slice that is only partially filled, will start filling up shulker boxes and refill the storage. So if we want to discriminate between slices that are full and slices that are only partially full or empty, you want to have some comparators reading these barrels. And here is a neat trick to make a really compact inventory fill level detection. So this comparator can obviously read the fill level of this inventory and that is output as a signal strength, right? If we go ahead and place a second comparator at an item frame like so, now this comparator will only be on if our inventory is completely full. So this is an is full detection. So if our slice is only partially full, this will immediately turn off, indicating that the slice needs to be refilled. This here is a simple one wide tileable mechanism to zero tick this sticky piston. So if I hit this note block right here and activate it, we zero tick the composter, allowing us to collect the shulker box. And this has to be a zero tick so that the block moves instantly because if the composter doesn't actually move instantly, which I'll now demonstrate, what will happen is our composter will end up just pushing the shulker box, which then flies off into oblivion. So specifically, we have to make sure that we zero tick this composter. That way it reliably collects the shulker box inside of the composter and if we drag the composter back like so it gets collected in this barrel. The beauty of this mechanism is that we can also introduce another system which prevents this from activating if our barrel is full like so. So now if the barrel is full 
whatever system we have that is parallelizing the backfilling process, it's going to ignore this slice and prevent it from ejecting its box because it doesn't need refilling. That's pretty neat, eh? So this shulker box, when the machine is done, will be our desired output looking like this. However, we also need a place to input our items to be turned into these shulker boxes. In order to fill the shulker boxes, I've got this dropper which needs to be supplied with items. What we need to do is make a simple one wide tileable shulker box unloader to unload these boxes into this dropper. And what we want to do is minimize the amount of inventories between unloading this shulker box and filling up this dropper. And it turns out there's a pretty neat existing solution by Obi that you can simply slap onto any design. So the beauty of this particular design is that all of the components are off to one side, freeing up all of this space for other components of our machine. Which means we literally only have a single hopper and this dropper before we can start filling up our shulker boxes. So to this dispenser, we will have a supply of our pre-filled shulker boxes. This dispenser will then place them down and then we can start the backfilling operation. We also need to consider how we're going to make these boxes. An important consideration for this is that we have this hopper minecart that's going to be picking up multiple items at once, like so. And what we can do is simply break the minecart and then take our items. These items will then be recycled into our machine that creates the pre-filled boxes. Basically what we want is a machine that can take our dummy items and then insert them into a shulker box in a very specific order. This can be pretty easy to do with hoppers like so. However, you have to be very careful. Hoppers have a tendency to randomize the order in which they push and pull items. So if I go in and break a couple of these hoppers like so to randomize their order, and then try the same operation again. You just saw the items filled the shulker box in the incorrect order. Fortunately, Java's predictable redstone mechanics can save us here. Because if we use a dropper line instead, we can use a rail and then power the rail from the very end over here. So what will happen is the very first dropper to power will be the one at the front right in front of the shulker box. So our first item, if all of our items go into this dropper line like so, if I click this once, the items will shift over one position exactly and we will end up filling our shulker box in exactly the correct order. There we go. And because this isn't a block by block tutorial, I just skipped to the bit where I've built up the entire box maker However, it still uses the basic principle that I demonstrated. If I just yeet the items out of this container, like so, we can see the machine kick into gear. There we go. Once this hopper receives items, it will start filling up a shulker box, and it is very fast, as you can clearly see. And we're now making our pre-filled boxes. And you can see that I'm always thinking ahead as to how the machine will fit together. Because all we need to do is supply the items from our yeeted minecarts in this water stream. And then it will run over all of these hoppers which essentially act as item filters for our specific dummy items. And the machine will pick up those received items and start automatically making the pre-filled boxes. So all we need to do later on is simply slap on the output of pre-filled boxes onto the input of pre-filled boxes into the dispenser that places them down in the backfilling system. And this is why it is always important to try and visualize what your design will look like in advance. Going back to our backfilling system, and what I have here is a one wide tileable counter. What you do is you can input a variable item count in this dropper. For example, I put 14 items in here. And what will happen is when I activate the sticky piston, it will start dispensing items into the shulker box. 
and it'll dispense exactly whatever amount of items you have in this dropper plus two into each slot of this shulker box. So let's assume that this slice is completely full. It has a box here waiting as well as this barrel completely filled with shulker boxes. This means that we don't actually need to run the backfilling system for this particular slice. In order to prevent the counter from starting for this slice, I've added this additional system coupling into our field level detection that will uncouple the counter from a generalized input. So if I try to start the slice, as you can see, this observer has been bypassed by retracting this block. However, if I take out a single box and now it's partially filled, now the system can be activated. So what's next is to build a global control system that controls all of the slices simultaneously. And unfortunately, this is where things get a bit hard to explain because now we have all sorts of logic and wiring going all over the place. So let's just try and summarize the cycle for backfilling these shulker boxes. We'll start by ejecting all the boxes from slices that are only partially full, meaning this box will go into the inventory, then get replaced by our specially pre-filled boxes. And then our minecart will come through and take out the dummy items. Then we'll activate the fill level counters, which will begin filling the available slots in our shulker boxes once they've been made available by the hopper minecart. Across all of the slices that are active, we then take the output of the counter activity and only activate the next cycle when all of the counters have stopped. Then once all the slices have been filled up, we'll then activate this system, which allows the entire machine to go idle when the last operation is finished. Adding on just the nine slices for the time being, and putting everything together, this is what we get as the final result. Underneath, we have all the buffer storages where we contain all the items we want to display in our shop. And in this little compartment, we have the storage for all the full shulker boxes of materials. So what I can do here is go ahead and just start taking out some items like so. And you can already hear that it's detecting our partially filled slices. You can see that all the torches that are on represent slices that need to be restocked. These slices have now been unlocked and are coupled into the controller. So all we need to do is hit this button right here in order to start a restocking cycle. Let me get myself into position and I'll use FreeCam to show what happens immediately when we begin a cycle. There we go, we eject all of those partially filled slices and replace the boxes. If we have a look inside of the shulker boxes, you can see we are filling up with our items. But I've just gone ahead and tick frozen at the exact moment that we dispense the hopper minecart. So in this chest, we will add exactly four hopper minecarts simply because we have plenty of them on hand and all we need is a dummy item to fill up the slots of the hopper minecart so that it only picks up the dummy item from our backfilling process. So here is our hopper minecart fully prepared to start taking items out of these shulker boxes. So you'll notice because we are using dummy items which are incompatible with any of the items we actually have in these boxes which aren't active, we will only take out items from these boxes that need to be backfilled. When our hopper minecart reaches the very end of the system, we have these two hoppers and this water which will slow down the minecart allowing each hopper to pick up two of the hopper minecarts. So we retrieve the hopper minecarts and then we are just left with these dummy items. At the cart yeeting system, we have this hopper right here which takes out a single dummy item and puts it back into another shulker box and this will replace the shulker box that we use at the very beginning of the system to put items into our minecart. However, the rest of the dummy items will get yeeted into this water stream like so, and they'll make their way all the way back around to our box filling system. 
let's just tick warp this for an hour until it's complete. And something that you'll notice is that we can have different fill levels in each one of these slices. And as each slice fills up, it will actually kick itself out of the cycle and lock itself, allowing the remaining slices to continue filling up the buffers. There we go, we're at the very end of the operation. And done. Now, if we go in and take a look at the buffers, they are all fully filled up once again. So, just a few things to note before you run off and use this bad boy in survival. You are going to need a lot of these dummy items. And when I say a lot, I mean you need enough to be able to backfill all these droppers and all these hoppers so they effectively filter items. If you are not willing to spend the time and effort renaming all of these item stacks inside of anvils, what you could do instead is use a type of item that you don't intend to stock in your shop and I would actually suggest using slabs because most of them are made out of resources that are easy to obtain in large quantities plus you can obtain twice the amount of slabs for a given block. You don't exactly need to be very particular about the order in which you put the slabs into the shulker filling system. I've just made everything numbered from 1 to 27 out of OCD reasons. However, it doesn't really matter what order you put the items into here because all that matters is that the order that the items get put into this box is the reverse for this box that you have being unloaded into the minecart. So I guess the best approach for doing this in survival would be to go ham filling up all these droppers and hoppers of slabs, run this system a few times to obtain a whole bunch of these boxes in the forward order, take out maybe four of these, specifically reverse the order in each one of these, then put these four that have their order reversed into this chest, and then your system should be good to go. For this storage, where we keep all the materials for our shop, I made everything maybe a little bit too compact, putting this shulker filling system a bit too close to the back filling system, not leaving a lot of space for storage. So if you want to obtain more storage for all of your materials, just move the pre-filling machine a bit further away and extend all the item distribution lines. Another thing to note is that these shulker box unloaders don't have initial box placement. So if I put a shulker box into here, it'll just sit in this dispenser, which is the reason why I have these trap chests, because all you need to do is open the trap chest, then the dispenser will fire and place down the first box. You can go ahead and just fill these up with more shulker boxes and they'll make their way into the system. So there we have it. A machine to help me automatically restock my shop display. I hope you enjoyed my perspective of thinking like a redstone engineer and following the design process of this shop display maker. I will be leaving a world download in the description so you can take a gander for yourself. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.